Hello. Hello. It's Kirk and Tiffany with Seeking the Glory of God Ministries, and we have a word for you today. That's right. Um, it's kind of a scathing rebuke, I think. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, we keep getting those. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll just start into it, and you can determine from the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to read out of Matthew 23, verses 1 through 7, and then verses 13 and through 15. And I'll read out of the New King James today. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do according to their works, (laughs) for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at the feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Mm. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte and when he is one you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves oh Oh. (laughs) all right so this is what the lord said about that he says religion tells people what to do and doesn't lift a finger to help them the sermons sound good and right And people go away knowing that they have to change, but all they've been given are words with no power. Do this, don't do that, etc. But there's no power to change, and there's no help coming from those who are telling them to change. It's as Jesus told the people, do what they say, but not what they do, because they're hypocrites. They don't change. And they don't help anyone else to change either. They only look good on the outside. And I could see a a vision of these pastors um, dressed in a certain contemporary way with slick sounding words, but they don't know God and they don't know how to lead anyone to him. And that's not, that's not a, that's not for every one. I could just see a, yeah, it's not a stereotype. I could just see a vision of it. Um, the Lord says people walk away from these religion ser- religious sermons thinking the sermon is so great because the so-called pastor pointed out a fault in the people, and he was right. But it's like making a New Year's resolution. The people try to change in their own power, and it might work for a while, but it's attempting to change outward behavior when inwardly they're still the same. So just as someone who's maybe gluttonous and overweight can go on a diet and take up running as a New Year's resolution, they'll see a difference after a while. But then after a while, they'll go back to their old ways. They'll start eating poorly and not exercise and become heavy again. Because there has to be an inward change. And in us, there must be an inward change by the Holy Spirit. So people who hear they need For example, people will be preached a sermon that they need to be nicer to their kids and to their spouse. And they'll feel convicted. They'll go and they'll try the five-step program they're given by, you know, the speaker for a better marriage and family life. And it might work for a while. But eventually, what's in the heart will come out. And if it's selfishness, pride, anger, or whatever it is, it'll come out. And they'll go right back to where they were to begin with. But the gospel comes with power it does jesus gives us Mm. new hearts 
And the Holy Spirit empowers us to live righteously. The messages you're listening to should help to empower you to follow God. Not just sound good and bring conviction of where you've gone wrong. And this is why Jesus spoke so harshly against the scribes and Pharisees. And who are the scribes and Pharisees? Was it only those alive in Jesus' day? Isn't it those who go about in the spirit of the scribes and Pharisees? Isn't it the leaders of the institutional church who do what they do for any and every reason other than love for Jesus? Jesus isn't weighing you down with a bunch of rules and regulations. He's leading you by his spirit into paths of righteousness. As such, there will be corrections on the way, but you will be empowered by the spirit of the Lord to make those corrections. His word comes with power. So when you hear what to do, he'll empower you to do it. This is vastly different from hearing a sermon from someone without any power in their words. Don't even bother listening to the religious anymore. The gospel comes with power. Mm -hmm. Combine it with your faith and you'll do awesome. Uh, It's just so true. I mean, the old covenant of the letter, um, that was already tried. People couldn't do it. God Mm -hmm. um, instituted the new covenant because of the weakness of men. And yet um, men still go back to that same method of being holy by obeying rules and letters and um, instead of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, And one, I don't know, I just, it's, it's, it is easier. I mean, it seems easier um, to have a written rule on a page. I mean, you, you can do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To follow the Holy Spirit is, it seems more difficult, but only to a carnal mind. Once, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. once you've been truly born again, you you have this the understanding of the Spirit, mm-hmm. and you you have that true desire to simply follow him. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, I don't know, to, I don't know if we've talked about this before, I think, but um, people like a hireling or a brother, who's going to do you a better job? Somebody who loves you um, as a brother or somebody that you just pay to do a job? It's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Right, and I remember once walking, when I was taking a walk and I saw the parking lots um, near where I live, there's several churches, and the parking lots were full. And I thought, why are they all coming here to these places where I know it's dead religion? And in, in the places of the Spirit, there's not that many people. And the Lord said, it's because it's easier he just said is because it's easier Mm -hmm. and that passage in the scriptures in the gospels that says that um, people prefer the old wine it in the greek it the wording actually in the greek means they prefer the old wine because it's more manageable in other words they prefer the old way of doing things the religious way of doing things because it's more manageable the way of the spirit you don't manage that Mm-hmm. You you don't control it. No, you're not in charge. <laughs> you're there. not in charge. <laughs> so you just follow. And mm-hmm. for people, that's that's scary to them, and they don't want to give up control. Right. And so it's easier to go the way of religion. But the Lord says there's absolutely no power. And when this word came, there there was like um, I would say there was like a tone of anger to it. Hmm. Um, he he does not like that spirit of the scribes and Pharisees. He does not like people putting a burden on his people and not lifting a finger to help them. He does not like a message given without power. The the gospel comes with power. And as Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I don't preach to you um, the wisdom of the world or fancy words from men. My message comes with power. 
And that's what you need to look for when you're when you're listening to messages. Look for the gospel that comes with power. Right. I, I, the rest of that passage goes on. Mm-hmm. So that your faith may rest <laughs> on the, the Lord. on the mm-hmm. Power of God and power, not the wisdom of, of men. <laughs> yep, on the power of God and not the wisdom of men. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's, that's an amazing statement. It is. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I think that's all. That's all I have. Okay. Okay. Well, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Kirk and Tiffany, and we want to tell you about Seeking the Glory of God Ministries and, more importantly, Destiny Road LLC. DestinyRoadStore.com exists to help those who are at risk or have been rescued from human trafficking. While spreading the gospel to the nations, supporting orphanages, and helping our partner, Jimmy, in Haiti to spread the gospel there. All of the money that you spend at Destiny Road goes to further the kingdom of heaven. If you would rather, you may donate to Seeking the Glory of God Ministries, and the information is in the description box below this video. God bless you and thank you. God bless you.